All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining. Four and five users have in increased their leads by using marketing automation software and almost as many see an increase in, in conversions. Marketing automation produces better quality leads, improves efficiency, and most notably can help improve the customer experience. I'm Valerie Rivera, Product Marketing Manager at eMoney Advisor, and I'm very excited to be here today because we're going to learn how to generate new business and deliver a superior client experience using marketing technology, specifically marketing automation. First, we're going to take a look at why advisors are turning to marketing technology and automation. Um, and then we'll explore the different types of automation so you know what to look for when deciding on an automation tool. And then we'll look at how to create an automated marketing campaign for generating new business. Feel free to enter questions within the chat box uh, throughout the session, and we'll take a few minutes at the end uh, to go through those. The client experience is probably one of the most talked about topics in the industry and has only become increasingly more important. Based on a Sewell Ruley report, uh, the majority of advisors believe fee compression will be experienced by financial advisors within the next five years. And they attribute this mostly to the growth of digital advice competitors. So advisors are looking at how they can differentiate their business and uh, demonstrate their value beyond products they're rethinking their client experience. And I'm not just talking about uh, a client portal, I'm talking about the intangible experience. Making clients feel special, uh, making clients feel valued and exceeding their expectations. Now, the client experience actually starts well before you probably have your first interactions. It actually starts when prospects search for information about financial advice or a financial advisor, and they come across your digital presence, so your website or um, your social media profile. And it carries through to that initial client meeting, the onboarding process of bringing them on as a client and then engaging them throughout the client life cycle to retain the relationship. Now, advisors and firms are realizing that Marketing automation can improve that client experience. Most firms have already invested in uh, technology for their client experience in terms of a client portal and uh, having a CRM. So now they're turning to digital marketing technology to create a more personalized client experience and also being able to scale their marketing efforts. Um, almost 30% are now currently using a digital marketing technology tool and uh, adoption for that is only projected to increase. Uh, we know that 50% uh, of those that are currently using the digital marketing tool plan to increase their spending as well. So definitely not slowing down um, and definitely being leveraged by, by more advisors every day. So what is marketing technology? I hear this term very often, um, but marketing automation technology is uh, technology that actually streamlines uh, manual marketing tasks to optimize efficiency and help with personalization at scale. And we see marketing automation used in a number of ways. Uh, it can be used to create your digital presence by scheduling social posts or uh, generating leads by launching email campaigns. You can use it to nurture leads with preset workflows that uh, will automatically send follow up emails or engaging current clients with automated emails um, that are sent on scheduled dates. So probably familiar when uh, you're doing maybe a monthly or periodical newsletter. Um, so there's, a, there's endless use cases for marketing automation. Um, and that's why uh, it's important to know your marketing and client communication objectives when you're selecting a marketing automation tool that's gonna be right for you. 
Um, you really want to have a good understanding of what you're trying to achieve so that you can find the tools that align with uh, those objectives. Are you looking to generate and nurture leads? Are you looking to build your digital presence on your social channels? Do you want to communicate with clients more frequently? Once you have uh, an idea of what you want to achieve, you'll have a much better understanding of the tools that you're going to need to help you act on your plan. Um, I also recommend to think about your current technology stack. Um, what needs to be integrated? Most advisors um, or any business is really relying on their CRM as the core of their tech stack. And when it comes to marketing, your CRM is going to be where you pull your lists from. And so you'll want any touch points to be recorded in your CRM as well, so that um, anytime you make a send a communication, it's tracked back to that, that specific contact. So it's really important that you select a marketing tool that's going to integrate with your CRM so that it's much easier to, uh, to, to pull those lists or, or integrate and, and send those lists as well as um, being able to track um, anything that you might be sending from your marketing automation tool. And also think about uh, the level of personalization that you need. So are you someone who is uh, okay with using template, templated layouts or um, you know, can you add your logo uh, and do, um, you know, do you need something that's a little bit more advanced? Do you want more design capabilities? Um, so think about where you are and who is using the tool, who's gonna be sending the communications um, and the type of personalization that you're going to need um, because it does vary across tools. Um, I always get asked, you know, how much should I be spending on my marketing technology? Um, just as a benchmark, in case it's helpful, um, it's typical to see marketing technology account for about a third of your overall marketing budget. Now, these are just a couple things to think about uh, when it comes to selecting the right marketing automation tool, but I do think that these give you a good place to start um, when, you're, when you're starting to look at different tools that are out there. So earlier I mentioned that there's many different uses for marketing automation and the importance of the client experience. For today's session, we're going to focus on that initial client experience that starts online uh, before first meeting. And I kind of hinted at that before. So your digital presence, leveraging marketing automation to uh, generate and nurture leads from your digital channels. Uh, if you've heard me speak before, um, this will not be new to you. Um, I think this is such a crucial part of marketing um, and, and really having an understanding of the digital marketing funnel. Um, I want to take a few minutes just to cover the funnel um, because, like I said, it's, it's really the basis for so many of our marketing efforts um, and should really be used as a way to um, you know, guide, guide what we do. Um, and it's really the process that we use to guide prospects. Um, we wanna guide prospects along a specific path from getting their attention to converting them into clients. Like I said, it's the, mark, uh, the digital marketing funnel is the basis for all of our digital, our digital lead generation efforts. So we're gonna start at the top of the funnel, uh, which is the attract stage. Um, so this is where we, we need to earn our prospects attention through as many digital channels as we can. We wanna make sure that we have visibility and we need to get ourselves out there. And we can do that through uh, social media posts, blog posts, or uh, maybe a link on another website that directs back to your site. So that's, what we, you know, that's how digital ads work. Um, but really at this stage, we wanna get ourselves out there and make ourselves visible. Um, as much as possible. So we try to do that as many ways as we can. And then once we have our audience's attention, we need to take the opportunity to engage with them. And this means using some form of content to, uh, to connect with them. So we can connect with them through content by hitting on a pain point that they might have or uh, providing content that delights them 
or provides value in some way. And then to access that valuable content and resources that we're putting out there, the prospect would need to provide their contact information. This is uh, the idea, the concept of uh, gating content. So you may hear me use that term later, um, or you may have heard it already, but we're gating the content. So um, they would need to provide their information in order to have access to those resources. Um, and this has a lot of benefits. And it's, it comes to when it comes to tracking, which we're going to talk about more later. But the main benefit is that the prospects providing their information uh, to, go, to get the content. And it's letting us know that this particular, uh, you know, this prospect is interested in the particular topic. Um, and they're really giving us permission to reach back out to them again in the future. And then with this information, we move to the nurture stage because now with this insight, we can slowly build on that relationship and nurture that initial connection um, and build trust based on uh, what we know that they're interested in. Um, and so we can do this by providing more value through additional content um, and being able to getting someone to further engage over time. And then because we've spent that time nurturing their interest, uh, we're able to move to that last step here, which is conversion. Um, we've built that relationship. So converting them into what we call a marketing qualified lead is much easier. Um, we know that they're interested in a specific topic and um, we're giving them the opportunity to schedule a meeting with us to learn more. Um, so this is a little bit different conversion than maybe um, converting them into uh, an actual client. This is uh, getting there. This is converting a, a lead, a prospect online to actually uh, converting them into some uh, marketing qualified lead that shows interest and is uh, interested in actually speaking and having a conversation. Now, this is a pretty lengthy workflow and without automation would require many manual steps from tracking to sending each touch point. But with automation and some initial setup, this can really, this can all be done for us, uh, which is really going to free up time for us to be able to focus on other responsibilities. And this is how we can scale. So the the digital marketing funnel, um, you know, really gives us an understanding of the process that someone needs to take. And with that, we can start to hone in on developing our campaign. Um, and we want to start by defining our target audience. At some point, you've probably heard the benefits of focusing on a niche market because it's essential to any marketing activity. We really can't be everything to everyone and that's okay. I can't stress that enough. Um, you know, you want to find your niche. You want to find um, who you want to connect with. And like I said, it's okay. We can't be everything to everyone and that's okay. So having a deeper sense of who we want to reach will allow us to better position everything that we create so that we can actually resonate with our audience. So think about who it is that you would like to reach. Is there a niche market that you currently serve or is there a niche or target um, that you would like to expand on or is there a new market um, that you would like to tap into? The more targeted you are, the better. Um, so for example, saying we want to target women is a great start, uh, but we need to take that a step further. There's women that are focused on their professional career. There's women that are the primary caregivers for their children, their partners, or their parents. Um, and there's women that are really involved in making the financial decisions. So these are all just examples. Um, another example, small business owners. Um, and we'll take a, we'll, we'll dive into this uh, audience a little bit further. Um, so what, what, we're, what I'm saying is you need to think about the characteristics, their needs, their challenges, um, that's how you can get into that next level of creating um, this, this target audience. Um, are there any current events or topics related to that, uh, to that audience? And 
most importantly is how you can help. Now that we know who we're targeting, so we're going to, um, in this case, like I said, we'll, we'll look at uh, small business owners, but um, now that we know who we're going to target, we need to brainstorm the key content items for our campaign so that we can engage with them. I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to use content to uh, touch on a pain point they might have or delight them or provide value in some way. So we'll want to think, um, we'll want to think about what content topics are going to be relevant. Um, and at this stage, we're really thinking about um, the content being longer form content. So things like ebooks, articles, infographics uh, that we can use for that gated content offer. Um, you know, there's content, there's tons of different types of content. So thinking about the content that can be the feature of our campaign. So it's gotta, it's gotta hold some value. Um, sorry about that. So going back to our niche audience, uh, small business owners, we can come up with some relevant topics. Um, you know, thinking about creating the content is uh, a pain point that I hear from so many advisors. Um, it's it's time consuming. Um, so think about uh, what resources you have available to you. Um, if you want custom content, leverage a freelancer. There are uh, freelancers that can write content for you. This is what they do and they're really, really good at it. Um, you could look at uh, different content providers. So this is gonna be content that's pre-made, but more than likely you're gonna be able to edit that content and make it your own, which is nice because it um, gives you a primer, gives you something to start with, and um, you can always build on that. It's much easier, easier to start with something that's already there than um, trying to come up with it on your own. And then um, if you have a back office or a broker dealer, um, don't be afraid to reach out to them and ask if they have any resources that you might be able to leverage. Um, they, they typically have some, some resources that you might be able to use. Um, but regardless of whether you write the content yourself or you leverage content that's pre-made, um, you're still gonna need to know the topic that you would like to cover. Which brings us to uh, a little worksheet here um, that you can go through and, and think about um, kind of brainstorm what content is going to be uh, relevant. How do we come up with those content topics? So um, our target audience is uh, small business owners. And I mentioned we want to think about what's going to be important to them. What are their characteristics? What are their needs, their challenges? Um, so you, know, you can jot down these things. Um, we know for us, if we're, if we're doing this, small business owners, um, they're probably pretty driven and motivated. Um, you know, they're running their own business. They probably prioritize the business's needs over their own, um, likely to be drawn to um, freedom and having the flexibility with running their own business. Um, and they also find themselves in a more unique financial scenario. Um, they're probably going to need an exit strategy or a succession plan at some point. Um, and because they are really focused on the business, um, they're, they're probably focused on those day to day operations. They probably may not may not have thought about their own retirement. So with this information, we can start to come up with some topics that might be relevant uh, for content to engage with this audience. We could do a a piece on uh, showing that we specialize in working with uh, the small business owners and and understanding what their unique financial challenges are. Um, we, we could do that as a video. Um, yeah, because you also want to think about what's the best medium, what's the best uh, content that's going to you know be the best delivery for for that topic. Um, so show you might want to show how you can help them create a business succession strategy. Um, another example, eight. You know, coming up with exit strategies that would be uh, relevant for small business owners to consider. Uh, estate planning actions for small business owners. Um, the importance of planning for their own financial future because we know that they probably are just so focused on their business that they may not have thought about their their own financial their own financial future. So, this is just a an easy exercise to come up with uh, some content topics um, that would be relevant for your audience. 
and then you can uh, you know, the idea of finding content, whether it's in a tool or a provider or um, developing that content, um, that's going to be much easier. So our next step is to create a targeted landing page. Um, a landing page is a website that's uh, positioned for a unique purpose and an audience. So in our case, it's going to feature our gated content offer. Um, marketing automation tools typically offer landing pages as part of their suite. So it's something that you uh, want to look for as part of uh, whatever marketing automation tool that, that, you, uh, that you're looking at. Um, and if landing pages are available, I recommend looking for a solution that has templates that you can customize. So you're not starting from scratch every time. Um, you should be able to have the ability to duplicate that landing page um, so that you can reuse it by, uh, you know, maybe just shifting it to a different audience. And then it comes to the step of actually creating that landing page. Um, you want to focus on what's in it for your audience. It really needs to be about them because we want to get their attention. Uh, at the very least, the login page or the landing page should include a, a headline. Uh, so that's up here. We've got invest in yourself and your future. So this is, should be something catchy that's going to grab your audience's attention. And again, we want to make it about them. Uh, and I always suggest adding a video to your landing page. It's just more engaging. We like to consume uh, video content. So that's a nice way to um, just engage your audience and, and help uh, talk about the topic that uh, you're referencing on your landing page. And uh, then you want to start to talk about over here, um, what's the gated content offer? Um, and so just a short little, um, a short little blurb of what they're going to find inside of uh, that, that piece of uh, gated content, what they're going to get out of it. What's what, why would it be important to them? Um, and then what they need to do next. This is our CTA, call to action. Uh, you've probably heard this term before. Um, it's very frequently used within marketing. So your CTA is what we want our uh, viewer, our prospect to do next. Um, we're guiding them along that, that digital marketing funnel that we went through earlier. Um, and in our case, uh, we've got the, the form here and the CTA. So this is, this is super important because this is how we're going to get the leads contact information. We're going to get their permission to reach back out to them so that we can nurture them. Now that we created our landing page, we need to think about how we're going to drive traffic to the landing page because we want to make sure that it's getting visibility. Um, we want to make sure it's out there. So I mentioned earlier that beginning stage, um, you know, try to have as, uh, use as many channels as possible um, to get the word out. So we want to be where our audience is um, and that's online. So uh, social media, um, great. You want to use as many, uh, you know, channels as you can, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, um, you can use all three. Uh, you could put a link on your blog if you have a blog, um, or if you have a list of prospects. I know a lot of advisors have um, this long list of prospects. They don't know what to do with it. Um, this is a good way you could drop them into this campaign um, and drive them, uh, drive, use that list to drive traffic to your landing page. Um, but make sure you filter. Uh, that if you are going to use a prospect list like that, make sure you filter it down and try to align it with um, your target audience for the campaign so that it's going to be relevant and you are creating a, a, a segmented list. Um, you can also use digital ads. Right? Um, so all of these different ways, we're trying to get the word out there and drive traffic to our landing page. And then this is where the automation kicks into gear. This is the exciting piece. So we decided uh, that we were gonna promote our content through social channels and email. Um, so we'll need to decide how many social posts and 
email blasts we want to use to get the word out. Now, I suggest running a campaign for at least a month um, and, and making sure that you're getting enough posts out there, you're giving it time to be seen. Um, if you put one video or one, uh, you put your campaign out there and it's only out there, you only use one social post to drive traffic, probably not going to get as much uh, traffic that you want. So um, you want to make sure your campaign has time to be out there, has time to be seen. And um, when it comes to using social, um, you want to try to use uh, or try to have at least one social post per week. Um, and when you think about your social feed, um, I'm going to, I recommend not making sure it's not just related to promoting your campaign. Um, make sure there's different types of content there. Um, you know, whether you're talking about what's going on in um, the markets or, um, you know, things that are, you're sharing your opinion on, um, just make sure you're mixing in other social posts. Um, so you're not just promoting your campaign um, or else it's just going to look like a bunch of uh, you know, it's just a bunch of ads um, and the whole point of your social strategy should be to um, give your, you know, have a digital presence that shows who you are and, and what your business is. So uh, that's my tip there. Um, and then um, thinking about for the launch email to your prospect list, if your uh, marketing t automation tool allows, um, you want to set up additional emails to go out that the, to those that do not click on the first email. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. We've got our first email, it's gonna go out to our prospect list. And then um, if they don't click on that first email, um, you may be able to use your automation tool to set up a second email um, that goes out to those that did not click on the first. And then you could even do, probably even do a third email for those that did not click on either the first or second. Um, so this is where those automation um, components really start to kick into gear and then scheduling those social posts um, out. So you have your first post that's gonna go out on um, when your campaign launches and then maybe um, you know one for each week uh, thereafter or you could do multiple posts. Um, when you're doing your emails, uh, I just suggest that you don't email every day. Um, try to leave a couple days between your email blasts. Um, that way, uh, you know, you're not just inundating your, your lists with, um, with these emails. Give them some time to, to digest. Um, and then uh, feel free to change up subject lines. It's always interesting to see uh, which subject lines get more traction. It's, you know, we do this in marketing We just try to test different ways and see what works, um, what's going to resonate with your, your audience. And then ultimately we're using these, uh, these drivers to our landing page. And then we need to define what happens once someone submits their contact information. So these are going to be our nurture steps. The first thing is that they need to receive that gated content that they requested. Um, so you want to set up a thank you email um, that provides them with that gated content. And then schedule a series of emails pertaining to the same topic of their initial interest so that um, you can nurture, uh, nurture that interest. Um, so they get that after they get that, uh, they submit their information, they'll get the thank you email with the gated content and then we can follow up with them on uh, with additional top with additional content that's going to be relevant. Um, always try to include a way to contact you as well uh, within those those nurture emails. Right, so I know we went over a lot, so I just want to recap this flow. Um, so if you're using a marketing automation tool, it will uh, put all of this together for you, um, or you, you'd put it in there um, and it will do the work for you so that it's automated, but uh, we're using our social posts, we're scheduling those to drive traffic to our landing page. We've set up our email that's gonna go launch the campaign to our prospect list. Uh, and if we can, we'll do some initial, we'll do some additional emails um, to try to engage any of those uh, contacts that did not open that initial email ultimately uh, driving traffic and promoting 
our uh, valuable content, our gated content that's going to be available on our landing page. Uh, once they submit their information on that landing page, uh, they're going to get that thank you email with that um, valuable content, that gated content they were looking for. And then we have insight into what they're interested in and can nurture that uh, relationship, nurture that interest with uh, additional emails. And hopefully by staying visible um, or uh, providing more information, um, they'll be ready for a live meeting to, to meet with you. Now, that's the workflow. Um, the other piece uh, that you don't want to forget about is how you're going to handle um, what happens after uh, that last step there. So we saw that somebody's going to be interested in scheduling a meeting. Um, what happens after that? So reaching out to a new lead within five minutes of their submission uh, gives you a hundred times greater chance of a successful contact versus waiting 30 minutes. I just think that's such a powerful, um, you know, powerful stat there, uh, getting in touch with someone right away. Um, so that's why before you launch your campaign, um, just make sure you have a well-defined process in place. So for how you're gonna handle that newly generated lead um, so that you can really move fast in following up. There's no question about what you're gonna do or how you're gonna do it. It's already pretty much set for you. So you can determine, Who's going to be notified of that new lead? Um, identify who is responsible for following up. If you don't make contact uh, initially, don't be afraid to try to try again. Um, and then also, we talked about earlier the importance of having your CRM integrate, uh, which is which is important because of once that contact comes in, they should automatically be added to your CRM. And last but not least, um, we want to track our success of our campaign. Um, this is something I, I always hear a lot of advisors that are, you know, they want to see the ROI on their marketing. Um, and so you have to take some time to um, think about what's going to be important to, to track with your campaign. Um, so the top metric that you should be looking at is conversion rate. And keep in mind, there are a couple different conversions that are taking place. Uh, and I mentioned this earlier about uh, the conversion uh, to a marketing qualified lead. And then there's the conversion to a, uh, from a marketing qualified lead to a client. So we wanna track our conversion from our landing page. Um, for your landing page, you wanna look at how many views it gets and then how many submitted their contact information. Um, that's gonna be your first conversion. Um, so views to, the views by submissions, it's gonna give you a conversion rate. Now a standard conversion rate, um, just so everyone is aware, it, a, good, a good conversion rate um, standard is about 3%. three percent. So doesn't seem very high, but um, that's a good benchmark to uh, track against. So if you're seeing higher, that's great. Um, if it's lower, you might want to consider adjusting copy or content um, on your landing page. So um, that it, it, you, you know the content there just might not be resonating with your audience. Um, so that's one way that you can adjust. Um, and then you also want to look at uh, the views of your emails. So how many uh, views uh, versus clicks. Um, and then uh, your total leads converted to clients. So that's gonna be your other conversion. Um, you know, when someone's submitting their information in a landing page, they're raising their hand saying, I want uh, this specific piece of content or I want, uh, I'm interested in this topic. I'm looking to schedule a call. That's that first, that first conversion and then um, the second conversion is when they're actually, you meet with them and they decide that they, um, they would like to become a client. And then, so you can look at those leads to prospects or lead to client, sorry. Um, but your automation tool should provide you with um, insight into your campaign effectiveness. So, um, you know, make sure that's a part of your criteria as well when you're selecting a marketing automation tool.
Now, I know we went over a lot. It's a lot of steps, um, but thankfully there is a tool that pulls together uh, pretty much everything that we talked about. Um, and that's uh, Emily's advisor brand and marketing tool. Um, it's an add on service that's going to give you everything that you need to uh, attract. Um, engage and nurture and convert um, and retain clients uh, with any money. Um, and it actually just got even better because just a few weeks ago, we launched um, our uh, new automated lead generation campaign. So this is a simple campaign uh, workflow um, that allows you to schedule and launch targeted content campaigns um, in just a few clicks. And I'm really excited to share what that looks like today. So we'll give you guys a look at that. Hop over to demo. All right, so you guys should be able to see my screen here. Um, I am in the eMoney platform. Um, so I have advisor brand and marketing. Um, I would select the I would select this uh, link up here at the top and choose advisor brand and marketing. And it's gonna bring me to my dashboard here. Um, and the nice thing uh, with, uh, we're gonna focus on campaigns today, um, just so I can give you um, a view of what that looks like, but, um, you know, Advisor Brand and Marketing has much more than uh, just the campaigns that we'll cover. It actually includes a full library of content that um, you can use for everything from, uh, you know, evergreen content that's uh, educational on a specific topic, uh, to uh, content about uh, what's going on in the markets and what's going on, um, you know, in current events, especially right now with everything that's going on. Um, you know, there's there's content in there talking about, um, you know, the coronavirus. And so a lot of a lot of content and resources that you can use to stay connected with your clients um, and prospects um throughout any time um, in the relationship um, we also have content that's specific to e-money so if you're using e-money and um, you're using the client portal um, there's a ton of resources that are dedicated and specifically designed to help you have those conversations about the client portal and um, being able to onboard clients and then we also have a full library of email templates that um, you can use to just stay in touch with clients about you know life events everything from birthdays to holidays um, scheduling meetings um, so a ton of great content in here and it is an add-on uh, to the e-money platform but for today we're going to look at the campaigns um, so the nice part about this is that it's integrated into your platform and uh, we'll go into take a look at the campaigns um, and there's little over 20 campaigns that are preset, uh, pre-built, ready for you to use. So all of the content is already included. Um, no worries with trying to figure out, uh, trying to pull content or create content, put it together in a bundle. It's already done for you. And it's already targeted to some of those really common um, niches and audiences that we, we hear um, that are relevant for advisors. So uh, we could drill down on those different target audiences, every one from we've got teachers, parents, um, couples, uh, business owners. We can we'll take a look at that one following through with what we, our example from earlier. Um, so we have three campaigns, three different campaigns um, that are uh, relevant for business owners. And each one is gonna be positioned just a little bit differently. So when you go in to select a campaign, um, you wanna just take a few minutes to read about uh, what 
the campaign, who the campaign is targeted to, as well as um, how it's being positioned. So for this particular campaign, it's positioned to business owners um, and helping them uh, with, uh, you know, those that might need help with succession planning or exit strategies. Um, so that's what we got. We read our intro up here. This campaign looks great. We'll go with this. Um, we can preview the video. Go ahead and select the campaign. Our first step here is to construct our campaign. This is where we're deciding um, what we want to, uh, how we want to launch the campaign. How do we want to get the, how do we want to promote it? We talked about using as many channels as we can, uh, social media, um, email. So we've integrated with Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can use one, you can use all. Um, once you put in your credentials, it will be there for you um, for future campaign use. Um, so you just have to add those in the first time. And then we talked about how you might want to have a, a list of emails or targeted uh, to, or prospects that you want to launch this to. So I can go ahead and click contacts. I can use any of the contacts that are, are already in my client list in eMoney. Um, and then uh, if I've created groups, I can use those. I can import a list. Um, so if I use my CRM, I created a, a list, um, I can up, upload a CSV file, or I just have a contact, um, an email address that I just wanna enter in. Quickly, I can. Add someone here. I'm actually gonna deselect the social. So our next step is to customize our campaign. Um, I mentioned that every campaign comes as a kit. So it's gonna include all of the components that we just went over that you would need. It's gonna have the landing page. Um, that's gonna, we're gonna show you how to customize that um, with the form and the gated content that goes along with that page, the video that would be there um, so that we have that engaging piece to get our audience's attention. Um, every campaign is going to include the pre-written social posts so that you can promote on uh, social channels, uh, the email template to launch the campaign, as well as the gated content and then uh, the gated emails, uh, or I'm sorry, the nurture emails um, so that you can follow up with those leads. So all of that content is in there. All we have to do is go in and review it already built out. This is our landing page. I can make any changes to this. Um, and it's all nice and easy to do in line. We can make any adjustments to this. Um, and it, it's already going to include all the content it's much easier to start with content than uh, having to write it yourself. So I'm good with this landing page. Also, I will you can also do a preview of it. So if you uh, are familiar with uh, the client portal, um, you know you can select your branding for the the client portal. Um, this is going to follow the same branding so that there's consistent branding across all of your touch points. Um, this is what the landing page would look like to the end uh, the end viewer. It'll have your contact information. Um, if you have any disclaimers, you can add those in um, the settings. That's going to carry through to the landing page as well. Our next content item is the thank you page. So this is what the lead or the prospect will see once they put in their contact information. Um, it's gonna drive them to this landing page. We don't just uh, provide them with the, uh, the gated content on this page. Uh, we're letting them know that they will receive a copy of the gated content via email. Um, this is to uh, confirm that we have the correct email address and this is um, how that tracking is done on the back end. But again, we can make any customizations to this. So if you wanted to put your logo here, you could upload your own logo um, and, and customize this page.
And then we have the thank you email. So this is what uh, the the prospect the lead will get as with the gated content. Um, so we can make any adjustments to the email and then we can um, add our own banner image. So if you have a banner that you use for your current emails, you could upload that here. Now we get into those, uh, you know, kind of non static pieces, those, those drivers. So we have our launch email. So this is the email that would be sent to that list of prospects. Um, so we can make any edits to this again. All of the emails work the same way. You can make any edits um, and then you can save that. You can preview what that looks like as well. We have our nurture email. So once the uh, prospect puts in their information, they get that thank you email. Um, in about five days, we'll follow up with them using this nurture email that's going to provide more um, information about, you know, relevant to the same topic. Um, so this particular uh, Nurture email is going to talk about, uh, it's going to promote a blog post um, about the eight exit strategies that uh, business owners should know. And it will drive to this other landing page. This is the second, uh, so we call the nurture content, nurture landing page. Um, and again, you can make any edits to this in line, change any of the uh, text. All of the content is here for you. And then the last uh, piece of the campaign is the nurture. Thank you page. So once they put in their information on that last page, they're ready to talk to an advisor. Um, this is the page that they will see. This is where you uh, were having those. Uh, you know, those, that well-defined process of what happens once a lead is submitted. Um, this is where you might want to put some information in here about what the uh, lead can expect next. Um, also customize with your logo or um, any other imagery that is aligned with your brand. And now we're ready to move to the last step, which is to schedule our campaign. Um, and so we'll just put in our scheduled date. Say we want it to go out on the 24th and we want it to go out at 7 a.m. So it's already available when everybody gets online, starts looking online. Um, and then we would just select launch campaign. And on that date, uh, our first social post will go out, our first launch, the launch email will go out, and then everything is already, the timeframes and timeline is already set. So you don't have to worry about setting up any of those workflows. It's already done. Um, and then we'll just, we would wait until our uh, leads start coming in, um, which is really nice. So it takes out all of those manual steps of having to track, um, creating content, um, all done for us. Uh, also, I will mention here, there is a compliance PDF. So uh, if you had any questions about compliance, um, there is a PDF that's available at this last step here where you can um, download uh, the PDF that has all of the content uh, for the campaign, has all of it, and if you've made any edits to uh, the campaign throughout, um, if you've customized those pages as we saw with the inline editing, um, it will include all of that in a nice PDF that you can send to compliance um, so that they can review our archive. All right, so that is the uh, automated campaigns in advisor brand and marketing. Um, really exciting. Said does all of that for you. I'm just going to hop back over to uh, PowerPoint. All right. So um, we covered a lot today, um, and I just want to recap some takeaways for today's session and, um, you know, things that you can keep in mind when you're creating campaigns. Um, keep di that digital marketing funnel in mind um, as the basis for all of your lead generation efforts. It is so important and uh, just, you know, try to use it as your guide. Um, know your audience so that you can uh, create content or 
um, find content that, you know, or you leverage content that resonates with their needs. Um, that's definitely going to help with, um, you know, conversions and just being, um, you know, being relevant to your audience. Also, taking the time to create workflows up front. Um, I know it does take time, but it's going to save you time in the long run. Um, that's where you're going to be able to get time back in your day because these things are going to be running for you um, in the background. Um, so take the time to, to create those workflows um, and uh, utilize marketing automation tools that are really going to support your marketing um, efforts, you, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve with your marketing. Also, if you're interested in learning more about advisor branded marketing uh, and the automated campaign functionality that uh, we just released, um, head over to the link that we'll share in the chat. Uh, from there, you're going to be able to schedule a more in-depth uh, demo with our, with our sales team. And with that, I will take a few minutes to go through uh, the questions that you guys have sent throughout the session. So um, give me a few minutes to go through those and I'll hop back over and uh, hopefully be able to provide some answers if I didn't already um, go through or didn't already answer any of them. Um, but for those that are hopping off, thank you for uh, enjoying today's session. Also had another question around the uh, campaign. Uh, compliance approval. So, as I mentioned at that last step of the campaign, um, you can pull down that uh, PDF um, for the for the campaign and send that over to uh, compliance for review. Another question here around um, being able to, can you add your own content into, or so not e-money generated content into uh, ABM? Um, so not at this time, no. Um, all of the content, you can't add your own. You can definitely make customizations to um, any of the email templates that we have. Um, and uh, as you saw, personalize the campaigns um, that are already put together. But as far as adding additional or at attaching outside content, um, that is not available. Um, adding contacts via tags. So, um, assuming that this question is, um, you know, if you've created any types of groups or you've tagged your clients, uh, maybe in your CRM. Um, so, if you've created groups with any money uh, in the e-money contact list, you can use those groups. Um, if you've created a, uh, if your tags within um, your CRM for your clients, um, that would depend on your CRM. And if you, um, you know, if you could segment your list and export the list based on those, um, that is mostly um, what they refer to as list segmentation in in uh, CRM tools. So um, you'd have to check with your individual um, your tool. Um, but you can use the groups within eMoney. So oh, another question around compliance, um, you know, for the other types of content in, um, in EBM and getting those through compliance. Um, so if it is an individual content item, uh, so individual content items, uh, there's, you know, you can pull down a, uh, it, they're all for the most part in a PDF, um, in PDF format. So you could download those and submit to compliance that way. Um, for videos, a little bit different. Um, normally you need the, uh, the, the, the video file for that. Um, so we do have a separate uh, microsite um, that you can use to access the, um, those those videos that can be uh, downloaded um, with the draft watermark for compliance. Um, so that is available. Um, yeah, you can you can download those from that site. Um, but all the other content, you know, you would be able to access and send to your compliance through your normal, um, you know, your, your normal channels for getting content approved.
All right. I think that concludes all of our uh, questions. Uh, we will be following up uh, next week with a recording of the webinar um, so that you guys have access to it. But thank you again for joining today's session. I hope you found today's session useful. Thank you, everyone.